going, everyone? Tim here, Tier Day Ventures. Hope everyone's all well out there. As always, thanks for tuning in. Much, much appreciated. And also on that note, thank you all uh, for always watching the videos and subscribing and stuff like that. We hit a little major milestone. We just crossed over 4,000 subscribers here for my little channel. So again, thank you very, very much. None of this would happen without you guys watching and tuning in and always engaging. So thank you very, very much. So we do have a new setup to build here on the table today. And this is one I'm very excited to get going. My friend Gary's recommended this chassis setup many, many times, and it's been on the list. I just hadn't had the time to get everything going. Finally got everything bit the bullet, got all the parts and everything ordered. Today, we have a awesome setup here from Exo RC. Um, I will get the website link down below as well as the fan page and stuff like that. We are gonna specifically be working with the Everest C1 chassis, and this is in an anodized green, and it is just a beautiful looking chassis. This is aluminum, um, and it does come with the chassis and the shock towers for the front and rear as well. So EXO currently offers two chassis. We have the C1 Everest here um, that comes in a few different colors now, um, and also they have the L Captain chassis. So the C1 chassis is flat skid here versus the L Captain chassis does have an angled skid here. So both chassis are forward based like this. So you're trying to get all that weight as far forward as you can to help with weight bias and break over and stuff like that. Once you get that initial weight up over, you know, gravity takes hold. The weight's gonna pull the vehicle up over obstacles and stuff like that and keep the vehicle very well planted. One big reason I've really been wanting to uh, try this chassis and everything else like that is also that the website is very, very user friendly, especially for first time builders or someone that hasn't had much experience in building LCD trucks and stuff like that. So. Um, on their website, it has everything's basically laid out. You can go in and you see which chassis you want, whether you want a C1 chassis or you want the L Captain chassis for C2, C3 more based. With those chassis, it tells you, you know, what stuff is compatible for both chassis. Um, right here in the front, they are compatible with Team Grajek Ford motor mounts in both the standard and the mid position. So no need for drilling or additional brackets and stuff like that. And that is a very, very key thing in chassis, in my opinion, the, that ability to adapt the super popular and awesome options like that, such as the Team Grotech Ford motor mount. So uh, that is definitely a killer option to have on both chassis. In addition to that, both chassis do accept the Team Grotech dual servo mount as well. And the recommended panhard is the G-Speed multi-point panhard mount, which also is a super popular panhard and works in a variety of applications. Right there tells you, you know, what works for the chassis. So you know what's gonna work and stuff like that. And then also on their products page, after you decide which kind of chassis you want, you know, one thing, especially with especially with chassis like this that have a more forward design. So where you'll have shorter front links and you'll have really long rear links or links for that matter. So cool thing that they offer is they offer their own link kits for their chassis. So on the products page and you'll see the little tab there for the links. The links work for both, rather be the Everest or the L Captain chassis. And from there, it's not just, you know, here's the links for it. You have some customization options. It has, you know, what wheelbase do you prefer? Everything from shorter C1 wheelbases to longer, say 13 inch wheelbases for class three. So then once you select your wheelbase, then you select your axles. And again, they accommodate for a variety of popular axles. Um, F10 portals, TRX4, Air 44s, Super Shafty, the CP43 axles, Capra axles, etc. So they offer a variety of the ever popular axles. Then from that, you can choose whether you want a chassis mount servo set or an axle mount servo set. So you can get that appropriate three link or four link setup for the front that best suits your build. So that is a super awesome option to have there as far as availability, especially for people, you know, diving into this, or this may be their first build up, you know, but having that option right there, select your chassis. Hey, on this tab over here, don't forget your links, go get your links. And with the links, it also does come with Traxxas rod ends and stuff like that. Pick up in addition to my parts was their new Exo skid. And this is very awesome. Uh, it looks crazy but it is super awesome. This design and how there's different mounting options and stuff like that, this is able to adapt to a wide variety of transmissions from everything from our standard SCX four bolt patterns to like a Team Grotchak two low pattern and even more. So super awesome to have that adaptability um, with the skid. And I really, really like the skid plate. So I honestly, I think I'm gonna order several more of these um, for a few more of my builds just to make some of the skid plates a little bit easier and for future builds. This is super, super awesome there. Definitely like this. And then one additional thing they have on their website um, that is super popular, not just for building their chassis, but in any custom build, they have cut to link drive shafts. That is super awesome because that's one thing with custom builds. Sometimes, especially with stuff like this, 
where you'll have like a super short front drive shaft and then you'll have a very long rear drive shaft. So theirs come at a standard very long length and you cut down and it is actually measured on the shaft in increments where you know where to cut. So you can measure everything and then cut it. It gives you a pretty good breakdown of how to do it. So also another good option, or if you are looking for drive shafts to fit a build where you need a short one or a long one, um, they probably have what you need. So back to what we got here. Again, we have the C1 Everest chassis. So we're not going to be building a C1 with it. We are going to be going with some super shafty uh, capper axles. Um, we're going to be building a four wheel steer capper based vehicle for class three. Now, why would I get a C1 chassis and build a class three with it? One, I really, really, really wanted the green chassis. And the difference between the Everest and the El Captain is the angle skid here in the front. The angle skid obviously has its benefits, stuff like that, with break with additional breakover help, stuff like that. But just because it's a flat skid, just because it's a C1 based chassis, does not mean by any means that it cannot perform outside of C1. I've seen many other C1 based chassis set up for C2 and C3 and absolutely dominate. And honestly, I do it like building a flat skid a lot of times for certain things like sliders and stuff like that just kind of helps. So either way, I'm going to be super excited with this build and it's going to be super awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. When it comes time to building links, um, stuff like that, a uh, good set of rod pliers really, really help. I always recommend them. And of course, I always, always recommend the Team Garage Hack Rod and Tool. This makes life so much simpler. Core wrench drive, right into whatever power driver you use and you're in business. So one cool thing here that I will note right off the bat with the links. So all your links are laid out. And that's one thing that always confuses people. Well, what link goes where? Well, in addition to making their own links and supplying with their chassis, they also went a step further and color coded here on the rear. So, and each link has its own color. So you know where these rods go. For example, if it has a black tab, so these are my rear lowers and then blue, so this one has blue, so this will be my rear upper. So that super, super awesome and convenient. Real quick, why I recommend this tool every time if you haven't seen my other videos, rod and pliers. Rod and done, just like that. That's why I recommend that, is why that tool is always a game changer. So I'm gonna finish getting these assembled and get the initial mock-up going. All right, so here is the Everest here. With the shock towers on, we got the skid in and the lower links attached. I'm gonna go ahead and get the axles attached and the rest of the links and the shocks there, and then see how it sets. All right, it is starting to look like something. So here we are so far. We got the axles in, shocks in, shock towers, links, everything there is all assembled, looking great. Got the links in and they were spot on. The, the axles right where they need to be. Now the last little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and get the transmission installed. We're gonna go with a Team Garage Hack 2 low transmission and the Three Brothers RC uh, A610 here. Get this all fit in and then once the transmission's in, then I can get some measurements for drive shafts and see what I have. If not, we'll order some more. So let's go ahead and get this installed. Well, the Everest is all done and ready to rock and roll power. Everything moves under its own. I did get the body mounting situation at least taken care of. I'm super excited about this one. Weather does look a little promising tomorrow, so I'll get some running footage um, shot and then load it up. So hopefully see that here in the next day or two. I know everyone enjoys seeing the running footage after these build videos and stuff like that. Uh, as far as electronics and stuff like that, this is everything was just transferred over from my previous C3. So for servos, we have three brothers RC G14s front and rear. Uh, we're using the three brothers RC A610 1600 KV motor and we're paired with the Silent Assassin ESC from Zero Gravity RC. And then servo winch here, I do have an NSD um, RS400 low profile servo winch. And again, this was a capper axle based build. We're using the Super Shafty CP44s on in there um, with all their nice, beautiful built internals as well. Also complementing that green chassis, <laughs> it just flows really well together. Are these purple Super Shafty wheels? I think all the color combinations, everything have really came out good. So. Other than that, the assembly, everything went super smooth. I'm very happy with it. Just a few things I'll probably tweak here and there, you know, just part of a new build and a new chassis, maybe play with some link positions, play with some shock positions and go from there. Uh, as far as body mounting, I did go ahead and transfer over um, stubby from my previous C3 over here. And I just transferred over the 
3D printed unicorn mount that I previously had, and then used some G-Speed uh, body mount spacers there in the rear. Overall, I think it comes out pretty good when it's all said and done. I still need to adjust a few things here on the body, um, do a little more work here on the bed. Um, I want that rear just a little more secure. I need to, with upcoming roll changes, I'm going ahead and preparing a little bit. I need to make a little grill piece here in the front, and I need to uh, make a new bumper and finish some material. But other than that, I can get it out and get it on the rocks. So again, we'll get some running footage uh, shot and hopefully get it loaded up here in the next day or two. As always, any questions, comments, anything like that, as always, put them down below. Do my best to get everything answered. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't already. And until next time, everyone, have a great one. Crawl on.